Sunday morning. I'm JB Hawkins. I'm Amber Hawkins, and thank you for watching us. You could be anywhere you wanted to be, but you decided to be with us, and we're glad because if we didn't have anybody watching, there's no reason for us to be here. Awful lot of work for <laughs> awful lot of work for Nutta. So, but uh, quick note: if you're watching this in Rowan County, there is a text number on the screen. Trying to find out as people change over to this analog digital thing. Uh, if you are seeing this in Rowan County, please just uh, drop me a quick text there and yeah, say yes. Let us know. I see it. Uh, we're, we're, I know we're on in Cabarrus and I know we're down in Stanley, but uh, so far as of yet, I don't know the way they've made the change if it's over in Rowan. So if you're seeing this in Rowan County, please let us know. Uh, want to just say, text and say I saw you this morning or yes, something. Yes, uh, or just put on. It, it doesn't matter to me. But uh, want to say good morning to you that watch us and follow us and uh, pray for us and support us. And uh, Patricia, we know you and Oliver are watching yes. and appreciate you guys. Thank you for what you do. And George and Mary, Coltrane, if you're up this morning, good morning to you. Uh, Rebecca Nolan is... Uh, a lady that watches over by Concord Mills Mall. It's a friend of ours. We've known for years. Gosh, 13, 14 years, yeah. I suppose. Uh, Melvin, if you're watching this morning, he's a pastor over in Concord. Uh, really, uh, him and his wife, Janie, used to come to the thrift store years ago. And I wanted to say good morning to you. Uh, Deborah and Alan, if you're watching this morning. Gracie, if you're there. Uh, uh, Alan's mom, if she's watching this morning, good morning. Alan Troutman. Uh, all you that are a part of our life and ministry, we appreciate you. John Xline, uh, Jim and Barbara Fur. Just, just there's a host of people, and if I forget you from week to week, uh, it's not that I don't think about you or pray for you. I just uh, sometimes have a lot going on because it's a short program, and we try to get a lot in. Uh, as we've been highlighting ministries this week, uh, it's a friend of mine that I yet met yesterday. She is a wonderful Christian lady. Uh, her name is Kathy Morrissey, and uh, if and I asked her yesterday, I said, you know, we've been highlighting ministries. Uh, what would you want me, to, uh, you know, to to mention about you? She runs a ministry in Concord called Baby Blessings Ministry, mm -hmm. and she works. It's a fascinating ministry, but she works with young women that are pregnant and in prison or going to prison right. uh, she works with them and and then when they get out she actually uh, had done this ministry in San Diego California for years and years and years uh, God led her to Alabama now has led her up here uh, but she said yesterday she said JB if, if I could get people to pray for me so mm -hmm. please pray for Kathy Morrissey if you'd like more information, you can text me. I'll call you, give it to you. A wonderful lady, super sweet. Uh, but please remember to pray for Baby Blessings Ministry. Uh, you know, everybody's heart melts. She said, you know, and I'll share this real quick. But she said in the in the prisons there, she said hard women, hard young girls. Mm -hmm. uh, very hard and you can imagine you watching at home and she told me she said but to see their hearts melt when they saw because she would be there when the when the woman was delivering right. in the delivery room there in the prison yeah. and she said they would bring that baby out and she said hardcore tattooed you know criminal type people 
they would just all rush the door and just ooh and ah and, and poke and prod. And uh, she said, you know, and, and you all know this. Mm, it, it, it's, it's, it's amazing what a baby does. Uh, Amber often talks, you know, we, we both our sons, they're mine. They're my boys, but and God gave them to me. And I'd fight two bears and a lion over them. But, you know, we, we adopted them. And um, uh, John... Our youngest, when he was 10 days old, Amber often says that when she went in there and, you know, they just locked eyes. And she said, I wish I'd have just stayed there for about an hour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Looking at him. Mm-hmm. Well, they do that. See, the, the, the supernatural thing about it is they do that when they're born. They will, when they place the baby up on the mother's chest, the mother and the baby will lock eyes mm-hmm. and there's nobody else in that room. And they may sit for 30 minutes or an hour just staring at mm-hmm. each other. Well, I didn't know that. And when we came in to get John, they had him in a little bassinet with all this netting over it and a big bow. <laughs> and, and he locked eyes with me mm-hmm. immediately. And that's supernatural because he was 10 days old. He'd been in foster care. And I'm sure he was already starting to bomb with the woman that was taking oh, I'm care sure. of him. Yeah, they bombed 10, with who 10, at 10 days, 10 days is old. a long time yeah. for a newborn. Yeah. But he locked eyes with me. I mean, he was supposed to be our child. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Amen. But, you know, Baby Blessings Ministry. And remember, Love Pantry. And if you uh, do, you know, my heart and you that know me, I am all about the community. I, 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 you know, I pray for missionaries and these ministries that are doing work overseas. I know there's so many poor. You know, I hate to see, I hate to see food thrown away. I mean, I hate to even myself. They throw away an apple core, you know, because I know there's children that would just That's the truth. They, they would eat the apple core, and it just breaks my heart. But I have always been community minded, and if we can't look after the ministries in our own community, I don't know what we're worried about other ministries far off. But uh, if you happen to know of a ministry that does an outreach into their community in, in Rowan Cabarrus, Stanley County, please text me. Let me know. I'll follow up on it. Make sure that we mention them. Uh, try to help them meet some of their needs. God will bless our attitude. He'll bless what we do. Well, and if you're first starting out in the ministry, your own backyard's a great place to start. It's a great, it's a place. great place to cut your teeth and, mm-hmm. and see what the ministry's really about because it ain't going to be what you think it was uh, going to be. And, and God gave me a 13-state area. He said, go cut your teeth in that. So mm-hmm. the first year, I, first year I traveled, I put 160,000 miles on a Mercury Tracer and um, it was amazing, is all I can say. is amazing. God was with me every step of the way. He heard every cry, every tear, every laughter, yeah. anointed and blessed the services. And God has always been, and you at home can say amen, He's always been so faithful. He, he is so faithful. Uh, you know. And as we talk and share with you today, I, I want to share with you... Um, Something that's been on my heart, and uh, I'm going to be reading a few things here this morning to you. And I thought this morning, and I always pray for wisdom and guidance and so forth. Uh, and I, I'm going to be in Exodus chapter three, verse four. You that are writing notes at home, you can write that down. Uh, but I. I thought this morning, as I prayed this morning, I felt like the Lord said, share with people about coming up higher. And I, I want to give you a footnote here about why, uh, you know, come up higher. And we're going to get into Revelations where where St. John heard come up higher. And he, and, he, and he couldn't get to that vision. He couldn't get to that plateau until he came up higher. Sometimes you're not going to get to that level and that place that you want to come to in your life until you come up higher. Uh, But I I put a few notes down today. Come up higher in your Bible study habits, your prayer life, your relationship with the Lord. Come up higher in your stewardship, marriage, family life, or integrity. Christian men and women of God, you know, uh, people are watching. And people take, uh, you know, what... You you know say what you do how you act I mean that's all part of of uh, you know our our Christianity your life is not an accident or a mistake it is for purpose because you were created for purpose allow God to take you to your destiny you must not die until you answer the call of destiny and purpose come 
up higher. And we're going to look at a couple of examples this morning about coming up higher and what it took for people like Moses and Abraham uh, to, to, to reach that new plateau, to come up higher. And then we're going to read in Revelation uh, if we have time. But if we're going to start over in Genesis, and we're going to be in Genesis chapter 13. And I want to, I want to share this with you because I think it's really important, uh, and we'll be sharing this in our Bible study this morning. But Genesis chapter 13... Verses 14 and 15, but I, 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 I want to go back to, to chapter 13 there. But the men of Sodom are wicked and sinners before the Lord exceedingly. Uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, uh, a very wicked place. Uh, you could probably liken it to many cities in the world today, no doubt. Uh, but the, in verse 14, And the Lord said unto Abram, after that lot was separated from him. Uh, And before we read this, the the key to focus in on here was Abram had to separate himself. uh, Genesis chapter 13, verse 14 and 15. Abram had to separate himself from Lot. And there will be things in your life that you have to separate from if you're going to go up higher with God, if you're going to fulfill what God is laying on your heart to do, where you're headed with God, coming up higher. And in order for Abraham to get to this next plateau, the first thing he had to do was separate from Lot. Hmm. And God told Abram, He said, He said, Okay, you've separated. You're you're on your own. Everybody at home say, I'm on my own. Yeah. I mean, we're on our own, guys. So uh, you know, it's great to have prayer partners and folks that support it and folks that stand with us. And it's great to have uh, the people that are a part of our life. And I thank God for you. But, you know, this is something Abraham had to do on his own. Mm-hmm. And there'll be times in your life when you'll have those that will undergird you and help you. And there'll be times sometimes you have to do something on your own. You have to get through it on your own. Yeah. He said, now, he said, lift up thine eyes and look from the place where thou art northward southward, eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever and ever. And, you know, Abram took this to the next level. And and in order for you to take things to the next level, it will take you. I cannot take you to the next level, but your diligence, your faithfulness, your stand with God will take you to the next level. And I'll pray for you, and I'll be there for you. And you know what? And here's the thing with us, and this is another reason we highlight these ministries that we do. I rejoice with you. As God takes you to the next level... I'm rejoicing with you. I do not have an ounce of jealous bone. You're the least jealous person I know. I'm not going to be jealous of you. You're not threatened or jealous by anybody. No, I'm not going to be. I've always been. I grew up in the country. I am a country boy at heart. I'm not going to be jealous of anything or anybody. And I will rejoice with you. And it's a ticket this morning because... And, and invariably we find that, and I always like in the church and Christian body because that's who I'm around a lot. But somebody gets blessed and people want to find fault with it. You know, they get blessed with, a, with something new or, a, a, let's just say, a new car. Uh, well, how much are your payments? That's not really any of your business. You know, mm-hmm. uh, can you afford it? Uh, you know, uh, what was wrong with your other car? And all these things that, uh, you know, people want to point out. And, and, and God wanted to bless that person. And I should be rejoicing. I've heard people say it, you know, about their pastors. Well, I, I'm not giving in to the church anymore. He's got a new car. I ain't got one, you know. And you're just kind of sitting there going, huh. Okay. Whatever, I'm in. Note for you this morning. Write down, if you're writing down, note to self. Self, to fulfill our divine assignments, we need a vision. 
No destiny can be fulfilled without sense of purpose. And that is the compass of your everyday living is a sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. Your vision is what equips you with specific divine tools that will enable you to accomplish your set goals and objectives. And I pray for you this morning that you still have goals in this life and that you still have objectives in this life. And, and one of the, the, the greatest goals that we could have, and, and, and surely somebody will say amen to this, is to become more and more Christ-like. Is, mm-hmm. is what they, uh, Paul said in Philippians, is, is to know Him. To, to know Him more and more being changed. You know, a lot of people don't like themselves. I personally like myself. I, I mean, I, I know I'm not the fastest, the handsomest, the tallest, the skinniest, the muscliest. I'm not the best orator. I'm not the best preacher. I'm not the best, uh, you know, I, 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 at a lot of things, but I like myself. Right. That That is a, a major hurdle because I know women, as women, we just compare ourselves to each other and... You know, you'll never be, you'll never be, there's not another you. God exactly. made you the way you are for right. a purpose. Right. You, well, know, this you what, have to find that vision, find that purpose, like he's saying. Just what we said a while ago. God's call for your life. Yeah, your life is not an accident or a mistake. Uh-uh. Your life can never veer off course from the place of purpose unless you ask God to reveal the particular direction you need from the Lord to stay on course reaching the finishing line of your divine assignment. We all have divine assignments this morning. Uh, Turn over. We're going to read about uh, to Exodus chapter 3, verse 4. Moses was able to step into his future because he was ready to carry the weight of his destiny. He knew enough in this one small scripture. Exodus chapter 3 verse 4. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see. What if he had just continued on? You know, this burning bush experience. Y'all are familiar right, with that. Right. But he turned aside to see. He turned. Mm-hmm. He said, God's here. Yeah. You know. Uh, so many times we're looking for God here, there, uh, everywhere. And, and Moses turned aside and God called on him out of the midst of the bush. And he said, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, He's, and, and he said, here am I. Divine purpose. Moses was able to step into his future because he turned aside when he knew it was God. Moses sensed a pull of destiny on his life. And Moses definitely attempted to accomplish it. Right. All God asked you to do this morning is to accomplish with the best of your ability what he's given you mm-hmm. to do. Whether it's whether it's, you know, whatever it is, because we all have divine purpose, is to attempt to accomplish it. Now, you know, over the years with Moses in Midian, he had learned a lot and had matured while tending the flock of his father-in-law. You know, he, he had learned a lot about timing with God, mm-hmm. about waiting with God. Matter of fact, Moses went out, you talk about waiting, went out for 40 years yeah. before he saw the burning yeah. bush. And, you know, but, but the, the key thing is, even after 40 years... He knew where God was. He knew it was God. And he turned aside. Moses was able to step into his future because he was ready to carry the weight of his destiny. Um, you know, you, you, you have... It's hard to face every day when you feel like you do not have no, any purpose. Yeah. And and I don't want you to perish for lack of vision. Yes, and I don't want you to give up on yourself. Mm -hmm. Let let's let's pick ourselves up. You know you have you have something to accomplish today from God. This, like I said, you know uh, this lady is asking for prayer. Maybe you're a prayer warrior. Pray for her. Mm -hmm. 
uh, you know, m- maybe you, you, you know, have the gift of hospitality and, and, and God wants you to take somebody to lunch today. Well, take somebody to lunch today. Mm-hmm. You know, but don't give up on yourself. You know, this is 40 years Moses wandered around and, and, and at any time he could have thrown the towel in, I'm sure, and said, you know what? 39 and a half years, I'm not wondering anymore. Mm-hmm. But he didn't. Uh, now, if you turn on over, and I want to read this to you, I love uh, Revelations, and I had a scripture there in Jeremiah, but as usual, the time gets right on going. Revelations chapter 4. And I believe this. God will not show you futuristic things until you're ready to come up higher. Mm-hmm. John chapter 4, or Revelation chapter 4, verse 1. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard, as it were a, of a trumpet sent, talking with me, which said, Come up here. Come up hither. Come up higher. And I will show thee things which must be. I will show you the future things hereafter. And he says, when John answered that call, immediately he was in the spiritual realm. Mm-hmm. What a great and divine place. I was listening to something, uh, some music the other day, and the presence of God mm. was so, it was marvelous. Mm. It's marvelous when you sense His presence in your life. It's marvelous when God speaks to you. It's marvelous when God opens to you doors that no man can close. It's marvelous when God reveals Himself to you as a provider and a healer and a comforter and a deliverer. But you have to be willing to step up higher. You know, He said, I'm going to show you these things. And He said, and immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne was set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. What what a what a what a view to immediately be with Jesus to immediately be where the Lord was to come up hither is to be willing to make necessary changes in your life in order to accommodate God's blueprint and success plans for your life come up higher and I like this Come up higher from the place of self-focus. Yeah. All about me. It's so sad. You know, it's just sad. Come up higher from the place of unbelief. From the valley of iniquity and disobedience. Come up higher and God will take you to the mountaintop, even to the top of Mount Zion. There will be deliverance. And there will be things that you've been waiting to possess. They're waiting for you and you will know that you did the right thing. Change cannot come when you're stuck in the same old rut. Doing the same old thing. I, I, I hate to get in ruts. Mm-hmm. I, I just hate it. I just, I, I, I just can't do the same thing day upon day upon day. I just can't do that. I'm not a I'm not a rut person. Uh, Abraham had to let go of Mo. Uh, Abraham had to let go of Lot. Moses had to turn aside. Esther, sweet Esther, had to be willing to be selfless. And all through the Bible, the Lord Jesus was willing to give Himself as a sacrificial lamb. And you have to ask yourself, what do you sense God is asking you to do? What purpose am I here today to fulfill? My purpose right now is to inspire and encourage you on this program. That's Amber and I's purpose right now. We're living in the moment of time. I'm not worried about what happened yesterday, what's going to happen tomorrow. I'm living in the moment of ordained God's time. And you're living in the moment today and God... You know, it, it, it will lead you to do things today. And if you'll, you'll listen and be obedient, Isaiah said, you'll eat the good of the land. Come up higher is and should be the basis for encouraging one another, for inspiring one another, 
you know, and as we see where where things are headed, even as we speak today, you know, there's there's going to come a catching up, mm-hmm. and there's going to come a a a a lifting up. And we have a purpose today to fulfill the call of God on our life. We have a purpose today to answer to God in His faithfulness, in His mercy, in His grace. We, you know, have this divine inspiration to lift our hands and praise Him, to open our mouths and praise Him. To thank God for the very very breath that we breathe, the very seat that you're seated on this morning, mm-hmm. the food that you nourished yourself with. You know, so many things that are in our life. And it's so important to know that I have a divine purpose this morning, but I have to be willing to take that step up higher. Don't get in a rut and be satisfied where you are. That's a terrible mistake that the enemy allows us to feel complacent and comfortable. And, uh, you know, uh, I I don't want to be complacent and comfortable. I want to continue to strive to be the best I can for the Lord. We pray that way. We pray that the Holy Spirit will give us that drive. Yes. I pray that way. Yes. Amen. Well, and, and, you know, without Him blazing the trail in your life. You're pretty much helpless and hopeless. So, uh, you know, we definitely need His inspiration every day. But I pray that you've been blessed this morning over this because I I really feel it's important. And I know there's some people that really needed to hear that this morning. Let God take you to the next level. You'll be blessed and you won't regret it. I promise you that. We sure love you guys. love you. Yes, tell your friends.